do you think uh, Tesla or Waymo or some of these companies that are doing uh, semi or fully autonomous driving should be doing driver sensing? Yes. Are you thinking about that kind of stuff? So not just how we can enhance the in-cab experience for cars that are mainly driven, but the ones that are increasingly more autonomously driven? Yes. Yeah, so if we fast forward to the universe where it's fully autonomous, I think interior sensing becomes extremely important because the role of the driver isn't just to drive. If you think about it, the driver almost manages manages the dynamics within a vehicle. And so who's going to play that role when it's an autonomous car? We We want a solution that is able to say, oh my God, like, you know, Lex is bored to death because the car is moving way too slow. Let's engage Lex. Or Rana's freaking out because she doesn't trust this vehicle yet. So let's tell Rana like a little bit more information about the route or, yeah. right? So I think, or, or somebody's having a heart attack in the car. Like you need interior sensing in fully autonomous vehicles. But with semi-autonomous vehicles, I think it's I think it's really key to have driver monitoring because semi-autonomous means that sometimes the car is in charge, sometimes the driver is in charge or the co-pilot, right? And you need this, you need both systems to be on the same page. You need to know, the car needs to know if the driver's asleep before it transitions control over to the driver. And sometimes if the driver's too tired, the car can say, I'm going to be a better driver than you are right now. I'm taking control over. So this dynamic, this dance, it's so key, and you can't do that without driver sensing. Yeah, there's a disagreement for the longest time I've had with Elon that this is obvious that this should be in the Tesla from day one. And it's obvious that driver sensing is not a hindrance. Mm -hmm. no, it's not obvious. It's, I, should, I should be careful because uh, having studied this problem, nothing is really obvious. But it seems very likely that driver sensing is not a hindrance to an experience. It's only an... Um, enriching to the experience mm -hmm. uh, and likely increases the safety. That said, it, it is very surprising to me, uh, just having studied semi-autonomous driving, how well humans are able to manage that dance. Because it was the intuition before you were doing that kind of thing mm -hmm. that humans will become just incredibly distracted. They would just like let the thing do its thing. But they're able to, you know, because it is life and death. Right. And they're able to manage that somehow. But that said, there's no reason not to have driver sensing on yeah. top of that. I feel like that's going to allow you to do that dance that you're currently doing without driver sensing, except the steer touching the steering wheel, uh, to do that even better. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And the machine learning possibilities are endless. It's such a, it's such a beautiful... It's also a constrained environment, so you right. could do a much more effectively right. than you can with the external environment. Right. External environment is full of weird edge cases and complexities. There's inside, there's so much, to, it's so fascinating, such a fascinating world. I, I do hope that companies like Tesla and others, even, even Waymo, um, which I don't even know if Waymo is doing anything sophisticated inside the cab. I don't think so. It's like, I, like what, yeah. what, what is it? I, I honestly think, I honestly think it goes back to the robotics thing we were talking about, which is like great engineers mm -hmm. that are building these AI systems just are afraid of, of the human being. And not thinking about the human experience, they're thinking about the features and yeah, the well, perceptual abilities of that thing. They think the best way I can serve the human is by doing the best perception and control I can. By mm -hmm. looking at the external environment, keeping the right. human safe. Right. But like, there's a huge. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, I I need to be uh, noticed and um, interacted with and understood and all those kinds of things. Even just on a personal level for entertainment. Honestly, for entertainment. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the coolest work we did in collaboration with MIT around this was we looked at longitudinal data, mm -hmm. right? Of drive because because you know. MIT had access to like tons of data, um, and we and and like just seeing the patterns of people like driving in the morning versus off to work versus like commuting back from work or weekend driving versus weekday driving, and is wouldn't it be so cool if your car knew that and then was able to optimize either the route or the experience or even make recommendations? Yeah, I think it's very powerful. Yeah, like why are you taking this route? you're always unhappy when you take this right. route and you're always happy when you take this alternative route, take right. that route instead. Right. Exactly. That, I mean, that if to have that, even that little step, 
a relationship with a car, I think, is is in, in, incredible. Of course, you have to get the privacy right. You have mm-hmm. to get all that kind of stuff right. But yeah. I wish I, I honestly, you know, people are like paranoid about this, but I would like a smart refrigerator. We have a, such a deep connection with food as a mm-hmm. human civilization. I would like to have a, a refrigerator that would understand me that, you know, I also have a complex relationship with food because like, you know, pig out too easily and all that kind of stuff. So you try, you know, uh, like maybe I want the refrigerator to be like, are you sure about this? Because maybe you're just feeling down or tired. Like maybe, maybe let's sleep Your vision on. of the smart refrigerator is way kinder than mine. Is it just me yelling at you? <laughs> no, it was just because I, I don't, I don't, um, you know, I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke, but I eat a ton of chocolate. Like it's yeah. just my vice. And so I, and and sometimes ice cream too. And I'm like, okay, my smart refrigerator will just lock, lock down. They'll yeah. just say, dude, you've had way too many today. Like that. Yeah. yeah. No, but here's the thing. Are you, do you regret having, like, let's say, n- not the next day, but 30 days later, mm. would you, what would you, what, what would you like to, the refrigerator to have done then? Well, I think actually, like, the more positive relationship would be one where there's a conversation, right? As opposed to, like, for, <laughs> that's probably, like, the more sustainable relationship. It's like late, <laughs> late at night, just, no, listen, listen. I know I told you an hour ago right. that this is not a good idea, but just, listen, things have changed. I can just ima- imagine a bunch of stuff being made up just to oh convince. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Uh, but, there, I mean, I just think that there's opportunities there. I mean, maybe not locking down, but for our systems that are such a deep part of our lives, like mm-hmm. we use uh, we use a lot of us, uh, a lot of people that commute use their car every single day. A lot of us use a refrigerator every single day, the microwave every single I, day. Like, and we, we just, like, I feel like certain things could be made more efficient, more enriching, and AI is there to help. Like some just basic recognition of, of, of you as a human being about your patterns, about what, what makes you happy and not happy and all that kind of stuff. And the car, obviously. Like, 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 maybe maybe, maybe we'll say, wait, 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 wait. Instead of this like gen, um, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, how about this hummus and carrots or something? I don't know. <laughs> maybe it would make it like, yeah, like a reminder. just in time recommendation, right? But not like a generic one, right. but a reminder that last time you chose the carrots, you smiled seventeen times more. You were the next happier day. the next day, right? Yeah, you were oh. you were happier the next day, and uh, and but yeah, I don't. But then again, if you're the kind of person that that gets better from negative negative comments, you could say like, "Hey, remember like that wedding you're going to? Mm-hmm. You want to fit into that dress? Mm-hmm. Remember about that." Let's think about that right. before you're eating this. Right. No, I don't. It, it's for some. Probably that would work for me. Like a refrigerator that is just ruthless at shaming me. Okay. But like I would, of course, welcome it. Like right. that would that would work for me. Just that that. Well, it would know. I think it would. If it's really like smart, it would optimize its nudging based on what works for you, right? Exactly. That's yeah. the whole point. Personalization right. in every way. Depersonalization. 